Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide, the channel where we explore the topics of men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And of course here at this channel we talk about classical menswear and I often extol the virtues of going to the extra bit of effort to dress smartly, to dress like a gentleman or a chap as, as I like to call it. But what's the point? Why go to all that added effort and expense to dress that little bit differently to everybody else? Well, I thought to help you make the decision if you're thinking about expending a bit more money on your wardrobe, these are some of the things that will happen to you if you choose to dress well. Now, one of the first changes you will see in the way people treat you if you start dressing well is they will become more polite to you. You will find that people will hold doors open for you, will address you as sir, and particularly when you go into, say, a store, um, the sales agents will make a beeline for you because there is this assumption that because you're well-dressed, that you're a professional, and by definition, you're more likely to have spending cash in your pocket. So most certainly, the first thing you'll notice is an increase in politeness and absolutely the amount of attention you will receive from sales agents when you enter shops and stores of any kind. Sort of leading on from that point is the fact that if you are well-dressed, you will not only receive more attention from people and get more politeness in the way that they engage with you, but people will make the assumption that you are a leader, that you are a boss or the person in charge of a group of people or perhaps a place where you, you happen to be, perhaps working. Because if you look back in the annals of human history, the way that leaders delineate themselves from, from the proletariat, you know, the ordinary people, is the way that they dress. I mean, if you look, for example, at suits of armour, the suit of heart armour made for King Henry VIII was fabulously elaborate and beautiful in every way, utterly in you know, juxtaposed to the functional utilitarian armour worn by actual knights and soldiers of the era. So, you know, the, the way that people singled themselves out from their lesser mortal uh, fellow humans was in the way that they dressed. And this, uh, as time has progressed, has continued. You know, the well-dressed, have always tended to be the powerful people in the social circles. And today, well, in an era where people are less formal in the way that they dress, increasingly so, even, you know, captains of industry and the hugely wealthy today uh, dress down. You know, the, the famous, famously wealthy people, like these social media magnets, they typically wear just jeans and a t-shirt. They've broken tradition with chief executives wearing fancy bespoke suits and the like. But today, yes, if you wear a suit and you're in a workplace where your co-workers don't, if somebody who didn't know anybody walked into that environment, they saw you wearing the suit, they would be the natural, I think, assumption that you are the leader, the person in charge. And that's great. It's absolutely great if you want to stand out from the crowd and you have the confidence to be seen as somebody who's aspirational, who likes to dress well. It could be negative though if you are perhaps somebody who's a, a little bit more reticent about being the center of attention or even it might rub your boss up the wrong way you know if you're working in an open plan office and visitors to the office constantly come to you and ask you questions because they think you're in charge and your boss is sat at the next table in his jeans and a t-shirt and people pay him no heed because of the way he's dressed it might cause resentment so yes certainly one of the effects of being well dressed is people will assume that you're the boss. Now, another very positive impact of deciding to dress well, more classically, will be you will find opportunities unfolding for you which may not have come your way had you not been a sartorially dapper chap. Now, sometimes it can be simple things. You know, if you go out uh, for a meal with your loved one, and you go to a restaurant, the, you know, the, the uh, host or the major D will look at you as a well-dressed person and think, yep, this is somebody who very much reflects the clientele that we seek to encourage into the store, we'll give them the best seats. You know, you'll find yourself seated in a prominent position, probably um, with better service because of the way that you look. Uh, if you go into a store, 
let's say for instance you went into a jewelry store um, and you were interested in i don't know looking at a watch or something and you walked into that store at exactly the same time well dressed as you are exactly the same time as somebody wearing jeans and a t-shirt now the sales agent is going to look at you two and he's going to make again the natural assumption that you as the best dressed person is somebody who's serious who's professional and naturally it might flow have more money and they will approach you you will get the first class service whilst your uh, your associate in the jeans and a t-shirt may have to wait until you've been served before they get their turn Similarly, if you're at an airport and there's an opportunity of being upgraded, you know, when you go to check in for your flight. Now, I'm going to be honest, this, this has only happened to me once in the entirety of my life. I've been upgraded from uh, economy to business class. But if you are well dressed, they, the, the opportunity might come your way. You know, ultimately, the people who are sat in business class, they've paid thousands of pounds often for their seats. They're not going to upgrade somebody who looks scruffy into that cabin because those people who've paid a lot of money for it are likely to feel a bit miffed that there's some scruffy urchin who's been upgraded into their cabin. Whereas if you look presentable and smart, there's not going to be any issues around that. Similarly in your workplace, you know, if they're, if they're looking for somebody to front a campaign or to be the face-to-face -face person with a client, if you're smart and presentable, you look like you pay attention to the detail of your clothing, it's you who's going to be selected over your lesser dressed compatriots in your workplace. So yes, opportunities will open out for you if you dress well. Now my fourth suggestion as to the way that your life may change if you decide to dress well is you will receive more attention from members of the opposite sex or whatever sex you seek to derive attention from um, because you know there's no doubt about it a well-cut suit or a blazer makes you look your very best and you know if you're seeking to attract the attention of potential partners looking your very best through nature is the way that all species do it you know you look at these uh, courting rituals of animals of all kind it's all about displaying their the attributes that they have to their very best level. And this comes for us humans as well. Now, if you wear a, even something as simple as chinos and a, a shirt with a button down collar, a nice, smart, you know, understated appearance, perhaps with a blazer as well, you know, you're gonna stand out from all of those other people who are, who have, quite frankly, in this era, dressed down to go out. You know, the uniform of men of all ages today tends to be a polo shirt, jeans or a t-shirt, um, sneakers, some sort of training shoe. What would have considered to be a few years ago, you know, the, the, uh, the clothing of the working classes is today what everybody chooses to dress in when they go out. So being a well-dressed person, you're going to attract the attention of those who are perhaps seeking to form relationships with others. Look at the animal kingdom for the best example here. Lots of animals, their mating rituals is all about displaying their attributes, be it birds displaying their feathers or whatever it may be. And as human beings, we're just animals of a higher level. And you know, if we look our very best, that will attract the attention of those who are looking for potential partners. So yes, if you wanna stand out from the crowd, if you wanna to come to the attention of others, wearing the suit, the blazer, the shirt, the tie, you are gonna stand out. Now, there's a downside to that. If you are happily married, such as myself, you're gonna break a few hearts. But, such is life. Sometimes you have to break eggs to make an omelet. Now, one of the skills you're going to have to acquire as an intentionally well-dressed man is how to receive compliments with good grace. Because one of the things you'll find happening as a smart gentleman is people will compliment you on the fact that you've taken the effort to dress well. Um, I'll give you a very good example. I was shopping in the city of Bath, not too far from where I live, um, last winter time. I was dressed, I was wearing a suit and an overcoat, and I was actually in a car park paying for my car parking when a group of, I would say, people in their early 20s who'd clearly been out drinking for the afternoon were walking into the car park. To be honest, they looked a little you know, troublesome, biker jackets, things like that. And as a guy who spent a 
a lifetime in the profession of safety, law enforcement, um, you know, they kind of got my spider senses, my hackers up on the back of my neck thinking, oh, what's going to happen here? One of the chaps was paying me quite a lot of attention, eyeballing me. He got quite close. And then when he got close enough to speak to me, he said, I hope you don't mind me saying, sir, you are an exceptionally well-dressed man. Now, it came out of the blue. I wasn't expecting it. It sort of knocked me back a bit because I was expecting something totally different to come out of his mouth. Um, but I accepted it in good grace and I said, well, thank you very much. Off they walked and I continued my day feeling a little bit more confident in the way that I addressed that morning than I did prior to that interaction. So yes, you will receive compliments from the strangest directions if you decide to improve your game and you dress a little better. Now, the downside to that is, an element of confidence is required here because if people come up to you and they say, you know, you look really good, what's it all about, um, you, you're going to be the centre of attention to a degree and increasingly so in this world where people dress down for most situations in life. So if you're somebody who's uncomfortable in receiving compliments and perhaps you know being the focus of others attention that's something you may have to overcome. If you're happy with that situation and you want to stand out from the herd, look a bit different to the, the, you know, the, 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 the sort of the, the rest of people who are walking through life um, not achieving their full potential, well, that's great for you. But it's a skill you will have to acquire. Now, following on from that to a degree is, yes, you receive compliments from people, but you will also find yourself becoming the go-to guy, the guru for sartorial elegance for your network of associates. Because everybody goes through life in this era, you know, underdressed, but there are occasions that require, that mandate people to put their best clothes on. And your friends who are perhaps underdressers will come to you as that point of contact for you know advice on what to wear to a friend's wedding does this suit go with you know this tie can i mix these trousers with this jacket what shoes should i wear or you know can i wear a pocket square with this what color should i wear the downside to that is you might find people asking you to borrow things because if you're known as somebody who has a number of ties or pocket squares or perhaps you might be the only one in your network of friends who's got more than one pair of dress shoes you know people will come to you and ask you to borrow them but it's a good thing because this gives you the opportunity to become the style ambassador for your network of friends and draw forward their standard to being better dressers, to being dapper chaps. You can lead the charge to being better dressed, but be prepared because they'll be coming to you for that advice. Now, so far, I've talked mostly about the positives which will fall from your newfound life as being a dapper chap. But of course, like everything, where there are pros, there are often cons. And in this situation, being better dressed will seem like an expensive business. You will have less money in your wallet if you decide to dress well. But that is not necessarily true. And I want to unpack that for you a little bit because, you know, yes, it's true. When you start out, you want to buy a suit. A suit will cost, well, anything from 250 to 1,000 pounds. It depends on how much you want to spend. Yes, you can get it cheaper. You can go to the thrift store. You can look on eBay. You can scour the wardrobes of your family members who are a similar size. And yes, you can acquire clothing cheaper, but generally it's going to cost you money. But long run, buying good tends to mean that these things will last longer. If you dress in a classic style, they're not going to go out of fashion. All right, fashion, don't forget, is fleeting. Style is something which is permanent. And when you've invested in a couple of good suits, a couple of good pairs of shoes, they're going to last for the years and years, and if you invest in quality, they could potentially last decades. Shoes in particular are a really good example. Now, a good pair of, you know, gentlemen's Goodyear welted leather shoes, even by a modest brand like Loke or Allen Edmonds, if you're in North America, will set you back a few hundred dollars or pounds. But because they're Goodyear welted, it means that they can be resold over and over again. Made of good quality leather, they can be, you know, looked after over the years that go by. They can be repaired. And a good pair of shoes, I would expect, even a pair of shoes costing 250 pounds from, say, Loke, one of my favorite manufacturers, is likely to last 10, 
20 years with regular good maintenance. Now, if you buy a pair of, I'm gonna say Nike sneakers, which will cost anything between 100 and 200 pounds, not far off the price of those dress shoes, how long will they last? They'll be fleeting. They'll be out of fashion in a year, and even if they weren't out of fashion, they will wear out. So when it comes to good quality gentleman's clothing, not only will your style be elevated, you might have to spend a bit more money initially when building a wardrobe, but that wardrobe is gonna last longer, it's never gonna fall out of fashion, and in fact, you know, even talking about shoes, they get better looking with the passing of time. So your investment will come back time and time again to make you look better in comparison to all those other trend-setting, fashionable people who are, in a year, buying their wardrobes all over again. Now, the final point I'd like to leave you with about deciding to be intentionally well-dressed is the fact that you will have more confidence as you go through life. It's probably the best attribute of being a best-dressed chap. Because, you know, how many times have we all said, when we're dressed up, perhaps going to a wedding or something important in our lives, you say, well, I feel like a million dollars. Or somebody will say to you, you look like a million dollars. And it gives you that inward confidence because you know you look sharp. And you can weaponize that for the situations in your life where you need that little boost. So say you're going out on a date with somebody. It's the first time that you've spent time together in that sort of intimate situation. And yeah, you're gambling your emotions. You need a little bit of a lift. You need a little bit of extra confidence. And by dressing well, not necessarily in a suit, but you know, wear a, wear a blazer or a sports jacket with a pair of chinos instead of the sweatshirt and the jeans. Now, you know, you'll feel that much more elevated and ready to take on that situation. Now, you know, we all tend to dress up when we go for professional situations like job interviews or um, interviews for a promotion, whatever in work. But, you know, when you're you understand good dressing, good dapper styling, and you pay more attention to the way that you look, and then you realize that you look better than everybody else who's waiting in line for that job interview or for that promotion interview, it gives you that little bit of confidence because you know, I am the best dressed man in this room. You know, this is my gig to lose because I look the best. All I've got to do now is perform in the way that I look. And that extra confidence can do wonders to get you where you need to be. You can weaponize your look and your confidence by the way that you dress. So there we go. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this interesting conversation we've had today about the benefits of being a well-dressed gentleman. I think you agree, the positives vastly outweigh the negatives. And if you decide to throw on a few better threads, you can really change the direction of your life. And yeah, boost your confidence, change the way that people see you and the impact that you have upon others. If you have enjoyed this conversation, I would invite you please to give us a thumbs up and please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how being a well-dressed gentleman has changed your life. I really love hearing how being stylish has made us all improve our ways in the world. So until the next time, I wish you well. I hope you continue to go through life well-dressed and I will see you again very soon.